Okay, I've been asked from uh, one of my friends to teach him how to do stacking. I made this tutorial to show you how I do it. You basically need a um, few things. The first thing is you're going to need a Windows machine. I have a Mac actually, uh, this is on my iMac. So you need a Windows first of all, and you can have that on Mac through VMware. The, um, the other things you're going to need is um, three software I use. There probably are other methods, um, but basically that's what I do. I use first PIPP, which is Planetary Imaging Preprocessor. And this, uh, this software I use to, to select the best frames and also to select the, uh, to, to center all the, to center the moon in all the frames, which makes it easier for the other softwares to stack. The second software I use is the AutoStacker 3, basically for stacking. And the third software is Registax, and I use this to fine-tune the sharpness and adjust the, the sharpness of the stacked image. So, starting with my PIPP, I go ahead to the folder where I got the frames, and then I drag-drop it. To PIPP. So here's the here's the a sample of my frames, and here's a PIPP. I select the solar a lunar full disk. Then I go to processing options. I deselect converting to monochrome because it changes the uh, image to black and white. Um, I, I leave it the, the way it is because. In case you want to enhance the colors, the colors stay there. And then you can test the uh, the threshold of the uh, object detection. And here it, it detected the moon, so it, it knows where the moon is. It can it can select the moon and center it in the frames. Uh, the other thing you wanna you wanna do is the cropping options. How do you know the uh, the frame size? You basically look at the um, at the rulers uh, on top, so it's like it's somewhere between 400 and 2800. So you would estimate that you need you need 2400 of height and width to have the moon and and the frame without having the object cut cut away. So I I select 2400 the the size of my frames then I go to quality options and I select the keep uh, only keep the best quality frames here we have from the folder that I got it usually it usually uh, you, you usually see the frame number here but here we have 129 frames I would like for example to have the best 80 frames in, in the folder that I got. So here I then go to the output options. Um, I want the output file to be in TIFF and then I rename the subdirectory where I want the, um, the frames to be. I go to do processing and I start the processing. So after the processing is complete, you can see that the PIPP also sorts the frames from the best frames to the to the least quality frames. So here, if you open the destination folder, you see like the quality. The first frame is the 100%, and you see the the rest of the frames are like the least one is like 20 uh, is 99.28%. Which, which tells you that most of the frames that we got here are high quality frames. So uh, you can close PIPP, you can select all the frames here, you can go to Auto Stacker 3 and drag and drop your frames. So you can see our frames are still large, you can zoom out, then you can place your AP points. So the AP points you can modify the sizes or the brightness until you get the points uniformly distributed around the object. Basically, I don't do too large or too small 
because you don't need to do that. I do it something like this, so I, I got good results with that, so I that's what I usually do here. And after that, you go to the frame percentage to stack. So basically, even with Auto Stacker 2, you can also select the best frames. So out of the out of the 80 frames that we got from PIPP, we can still filter the 80% uh, percent best frames in Auto Stacker. So you can do 100% because PIPP already uh, sorted the quality frames, or you can do 80% if you want better qualities of the frames. Uh, since we have 80 frames, we can filter more. Basically, 50 frames are more than enough for you to get a good quality image. So you don't need to do the analyze because the analyze tells you the quality of the frames that you got, but PIPP already did that for us. So we can go ahead and directly go to stack. So this basically stacks the image into a final one image. So after the stacking is complete, you go to your original folder, you find an, a new folder called ASP80, which means Auto Stacker P80, uh, which denotes the percentage of the good frames that you selected. You can see the frame dimension is 2400 by 2400 and the size is 32 megabytes, which is considerably a, a, a large file, which tells you that you got a lot of information from the stack that you have. Then I go to Registax, I drag drop the moon stack into Registax. You want to show the full image. So that's your final image. You can see the object is almost centered in the frame. So I use Registax for two things. The first thing is to modify the exposure of the frame. So I, I go to histogram and then I stretch the histogram for to have the exposure boundaries where it should be and now you can see that we have the um, we have the exposure improved here uh, you can select do all to see the properly exposed stack and then you can select one area in your in your stack image and you can modify you can modify the sharpness to where you want it since we have a lot of frames in the stack, you can you can increase the sharpness without worrying about increasing the noise in the photo. So here, I modify the sharpness. You select one region because it's better for your processor, for your computer if it's slow, to show the preview immediately. You can modify this in, in and settings processing area you can select you can select the area that that works best for you uh, my machine is considerably fast so I, I selected the the 1024 but you can go a smaller if you like and after you are you're like happy with with the sharpness that you got you can do the do all you can see the uh, the final result so you can go more if you want if you like the settings that you have you can save the scheme here so later when you wanna when you wanna come back you don't have to modify those those will be already saved in this in this file here so at the end i save the stack And I, I, I usually prefer the PNG 16-bit because uh, in case you want to sharpen it more in, in Lightroom or wanna, you want to enhance the colors, you have more range to do it with Lightroom. The JPEG does it in 8-bit, so that doesn't give you a lot of, uh, lot of information in the stack. PNG 16-bit is much better. The TIF is good as well, but for Lightroom, uh, it's not that compatible. Lightroom doesn't read TIFF most of the time in my case so I use the PNG and I save the file so that's our final result with the moon you can probably have it more sharpened I prefer to leave it like this because it's more natural and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it useful